ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಜಯ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಜಯ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಜಯ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಚಂದ್ರ ಜಯ ಗೌರವ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಜಯ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಚಂದ್ರ ಜಯ ಗೌರವ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಜಯ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಜಯ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಜಯ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಚಂದ್ರ ಜಯ ಗೌರವ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಚಂದ್ರ ಜಯ ಗೌರವ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ So we will continue reading from teachings of Lord Chaitanya, chapter 16. Can somebody please read? I can read. Please. The Sagarbha and Nir- Nirgarbha yogis can be further divided into three categories. The beginner, the advanced yogis and he who has attained perfection. These yogis are described... One minute, there's a screen error, just a second. Sorry. The Sargabha and the Nirgabha yogis can be further divided into three categories. The beginner, the advanced yogis, and he who has attained perfection. These yogis are described in the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Those who are trying to ascend the path of mystic yoga are called Aru, Aru, Ruru, Aru Rukushu yogis, the beginners. In Aru Rukushu yoga, one practices various sittings, postures, and concentrates the mind. One ascends the path of yoga by means of meditation and detachment. And when he and when one is no longer attached to working for sense gratification, he gradually becomes free. At that time, he attains a state of ecstasy called Yog Arudha. If such a mystic yogi somehow or the other comes in contact with a saintly person, he becomes a devotee of Krishna. So we have been hearing Lord Chaitanya saying, no matter what path we take, if we take up even the path of yoga, we have to have the come to devotional service to get perfection of our path. Or we are taking the path of Gyan, Gyan Yoga, knowledge. We also have to come somehow or the other in touch with the devotee, begin devotional service to get the perfection of the path. The word Urukarma has already been explained. It indicates the Supreme Lord. All the Atma Ramas are engaged in devotional service to Urukarma. Before engaging in devotional service, such transcendentalists are called Santans or specified devotees. So Shantaras, then it progresses on to Dasyaras, engaging in devotional service. Before engaging in devotional service, such transcendentalists are called Shantas. So that's a liberated platform, appreciating the position of Krishna as God. How we say, right? The first is Shantaras, Dasyaras, gradual elevation. So this is what's being mentioned here. The word Atma or Self is sometimes translated as mind. Sometimes mental spe- speculars present philosophical theories in different ways. But when they come in contact with saintly persons engaged in devotional service, they also become devotees. Mm. Bhaktas. Bhakti comes from Bhakta. Mm. Yeah. The pure devotee, he, can, he makes the whole world uh, into devotees. Srimad Bhagavatam 10.87.18 describes the two classes of yogis, Sagarbha and Nigarbha, as follows. The yogis begin their practice of yoga by worshipping their abdomen and then they try to concentrate their attention on their intestines. Gradually, their meditation rises to the heart and then they concentrate the mind there. Then they gradually direct their attention to the top of the head. One who can raise this meditation to that position is understood to have become perfect and to be no longer subject to birth and death. Even such yogis render causeless devotional service to the Lord when they come in contact with pure devotees. Wow, so this is a process that these yogis are following. 
meditative on abdomen, intestines, heart, mind, and then top of the head. And that's how they can, what? you can raise this medit meditation to that position, become perfect, means no more birth and death. So they are on the liberated platform and even they get attracted to devotional service. So devotional service is so attractive that even, that's what the Atma Ram verse is, no? that the transcendentalists who are liberated, even they want to engage in pure devotional service. So when they come in contact with pure devotees, they also want to engage in devotional service. Yeah. The word Atma also means an endeavor. In every case, there is some endeavor. And the ultimate endeavor is to endeavor to reach the highest perfectional stage of devotional service. In Srimad Bhagavatam 1.5.18, it is stated that one should try to attain the highest goal, which cannot be attained either in the higher or lower planetary system. The idea is that material happiness and misery all planetary systems and in course of time, but the high achievement in devotional service cannot be attained anywhere without, in, without endeavor. Therefore, in Bran Naradya, Naradya Purana, it is said that one who is serious about misunderstanding the highest, sorry, one who is serious of, uh, about understanding the highest perfectional stage of devotional service can become successful simply by his endeavor. One cannot attain the highest perfection stage of devotional service without personal endeavor, as Krishna states in Bhagavad Gita 10.10. 10. Can somebody read this? Sesham satata yuktanam bhajatam priyuti purvakam tadami buddhi yogam tam yena mam upayantite To those who are constantly rendering devotional service to me with love, I am who I am situated in everyone's heart. Give the intelligence by which they can make und undeterred pro progress in devotional activities. So what Lord Chaitanya is saying that when the Brahman Naradya Puran, what they are saying is, we have to endeavor to engage in devotional service. Hearing, chanting, we have to do it. You know, we have to make this, make this effort. And then what happens? Krishna says he gives the intelligence by which we can come to him. The word Atma also means dhriti, patience or per perseverance. By patience and perseverance, one can achieve the highest stage of devotional service. As far as the word Muni is concerned, meanings. the word also refers to a bird and a large black bee. Another meaning of the word Nir Granta is a foolish person. Thus, even birds, bees, and foolish people engage in the law, which they are favored by the pure devotees. Indeed, it is stated in Srimad 1.14 that the birds in Vrindavan are devoted to the service of the Supreme Lord. It is also stated in Bhagavatam 10.15.6 that the, that the black bee in Vrindavan always follows Krishna and Balaram. In that verse, Sri Krishna describes to Balaram the devotional service the bees were rendering unto him. Lord ba so this Balaram. Is the, sorry. This is the, the mercy of the pure devotee that he gives this, he engages everyone in devotional service. It's his mercy that we are able to hear a chant. The mercy of the pure devotees. Mercy of Srila Prabhupada that we are hearing the, all this uh, glories of Krishna, of Lord Chaitanya. Ete alina stava yasho akila loka tirtam gayanta adi purusha nupatam bajante prayo amimone gana bavadia mukya godam bani api na jahati anagat madevam. O supremely virtuous one, the personality of Godhead, just see how these bees are following you, glorifying your transcendental fame and thus worshipping you. Actually, these bees are not as they appear. They are great sages who are taking this opportunity to worship the Supreme Soul. Although you are not knowable by ordinary persons, they know you and they are following you and glorifying you. Mm -hmm. So everyone is glorifying Krishna. And this is what the pure devotee does. 
He engages everyone in the glories of Krishna. You know, when we love someone, we like to talk about them. We like to talk, and then when others also talk about them, we feel so happy. Mm. So the pure devotee, he loves Krishna so much. He wants everyone to also revive their love for Krishna. He feels happy that everyone is talking about Krishna. And originally, we each of us are pure devotees in our pure state. Now, each of us has this pure love for Krishna. Just right now, we have gotten this wrong idea that we are separate from Krishna. In the next verse in Srimad Bhagavatam 10.15.7, Krishna describes a similar reception given to Balaram by the peacocks and cuckoos of Vrindavan. O worshipable oh, one, just see how the peacocks returning to their nest are receiving you with full vigor. These peacocks are just like the damsels of bridge. The cuckoos on the branches of the trees are also receiving you in their own way. The residents of Vrindavan are so glorious that everyone is prepared to render service to the Another verse in Sh of Srimad Bhagavatam 10.35.7 describes a similar reception given to Krishna by the birds, birds of Vrindavan. Oh, just see how the cranes and swans of the waters are singing the glories of the Lord. Indeed, they are standing in the water meditating on Him, worshipping Him. It is stated elsewhere in Srimad Bhagavatam 2.4.18. Even the aboriginals and uncivilized youth, like Kiratas, Yunans, and Andras, Puli. Pulindas, Pulkasa, Abiras, Shubha, Yavanas, and Khasas, as well as many other such human beings, can all be purified simply by taking shelter of the pure devotee. Therefore, Sukadev Goswami offered his respectful obeisances to Lord Vishnu, whose devotees can work so wonderfully. So, the power of the pure devotee. <laughs> I'm sorry. Bhagavatam is saying, doesn't matter, we are uncivilized. Whatever community we are born in, the power of the human being, the uh, power of the pure devotee, you can give Krishna consciousness to everyone. Another, another meaning of the word dritti is to re realize oneself as elevated. In this state, one feels that he is free from all things that is elevated to the highest platform of life. All devotees of Krishna and full Krishna consciousness are free from all kinds of material pleasures and miseries. They are fully absorbed in the service of the Lord and they are always jolly by virtue of their engagement in this transcendental service. They are experienced men in ha of happiness. Indeed, they are so happy that they do not even wish to be promoted to the spiritual planets for they are happy in every sphere of life. Being fully, uh, being fulfilled in the transcendental service of the Lord, they desire neither material objects nor material sense pleasures. As stated by the six Goswamis, a person who, whose senses are fixed in the service of the Supreme Lord can be called peaceful. So this is the pure devotee because he's on the liberated platform. So the modes of nature don't trouble him. The three miseries of material world that we have, Adhyatmika, Adhyatma, and Adhibhotik, they don't trouble him. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, devotional, uh, devotional service is susukham kartum avyayam. It's joyfully performed. So the pure devotee, because he's on the liberated platform, he doesn't feel the miseries of the material world. He's completely happy in engaging in his service. You know, in the material platform, we have to do things to become happy. Here, he's just engaged in service and he's completely happy. Completely. Thus, the word Atma Ram indicates that even birds, beasts and fools, in short, everyone, can become attracted by the transcendental qualities of Krishna, engage in his service and become liberated. So, we can see that as we were hearing earlier that the cuckoos, the peacocks, the bees, how they are serving Krishna and Balaram and Vrindava. So everyone is serving Krishna. Everyone can serve Krishna. Lord Chaitanya, when he was going to Vrindavan, he, he passed the Jari Khan forest and he openly gave his mercy, the lions, tigers, the deer, they were chanting Hare Krishna. This is the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. It's still there, this Jarikhan forest, the place where 
um, the the tigers and the elephants they're dancing together. Still another meaning of Atma is intelligence. intelligence. But special intelligence is also called Atmaram. The Atmarams with special intelligence are of two kinds. One is the learned sage and the other is the fool without book knowledge. Both of these can have an opportunity to associate with a pure devotee. Even the foolish Atmarams can give up everything and engage in Krishna consciousness in pure devotional service. In Bhagavad Gita 10.8 it is said that the Supreme Lord Krishna is the origin of everything, that everything emanates from him, emanates from him. And, and that anyone who is actual intelligent understands and engages in the service. A verse in Srimad Bhagavatam 2.7.46 states, To say nothing of persons who are intelligent enough to study the Vedas, even less intelligent persons like women, nans and sabaras, as well as the birds and the beasts can achieve the highest perfectional stage of life by engaging in devotional service of the Lord. As previously quoted, Srimad in ba uh, as previously quoted, Bhagavad Gita 10.10 .10 also indicates that when a person becomes highly intelligent and engages in Krishna consciousness, Krishna reciprocates by giving him the intelligence by which he can be promoted to the abode of Supreme Lord. So here we are being said that, in fact, it's a sign of intelligence to, to engage in pure devotional service, to engage in devotional service. Krishna says, Bhagavad Gita, this server, it, iti matva bachante maam, that is that, Buddha bhava samanvita, that one mata uh, parataram what, what is that? Everything emanates from me. And let's read it. 10.8 Aham sarvasya prabhavo mata par sarvam pravartate iti matva bhajante ma buddha bhava samanvita I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who perfectly know this engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. So Krishna is saying they are wise who can understand that everything is coming from Krishna. Krishna is the source of material and spiritual worlds. And because they understand it, they engage in pure devotional service because they understand Krishna's position. And this is a sign of great intelligence. So Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is saying that. Bhagavatam is saying that. Bhagavatam also says in 11th Canto that those who are intelligent will worship the Lord in his form of Lord Chaitanya by the Harinam Sankirtan. So it's a sign of great intelligence to engage in devotional service to the Lord. Yeah, 10, 10 also Krishna is saying that he is giving the intelligence by which one can come to him. Tesham satata yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam dadami bhati yogam tam yena mam upayanti te. To those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. So people might think that it's just simply meant sentimental or something. No, it's a great sign of great intelligence to engage in the, uh, devotional service of Krishna. The Lord then told Sanatan Goswami that the association of good devotees, engagement in transcendental service of the Lord, the, un the understanding of Srimad Bhagavatam, the chanting of the holy name of the Lord, and residence in the holy place like Vrindavan or Mathura are all very important for elevation of to the transcendental plane. One need not practice all five of these items. If one is expert in just one of them, he will, without fail, be elevated to the stage of love of Godhead. One who is actually... Intelligent gives up all material desires and engages in the transcendental service of Krishna. The influence of devotional service is such that a person who engages in it gives up all material desires and becomes fully attached to Krishna, being inspired by the transcendental qualities of the Lord. Such is the beauty of the Lord in the eyes of his devotee. So when Lord Chaitanya was telling Rupa Goswami also the items of devotional service, he had said the five main items. And we can see how Srila Prabhupada has incorporated these five main items in the morning, daily morning program. Uh, so he's saying association of devotees, association with pure devotees, deity worship, transcendental service of the Lord, that's deity worship, studying Bhagavatam, chanting the holy name, and residence in a holy place like Vrindavan or Mathura. 
So Shloka Upanishad would say that the temples are Vaikuntha. So we can see how expertly Shla Prabhupada, he put these five main items of devotional service in the daily morning program. And then Lord Chaitanya says that five or some of them or even one of them, if one can take them up, if one can become expert in one of them, he can revive his love of God easily. Again, it's mentioned one is intelligent if he can take up devotional service to the Lord. And what happens is when one takes up devotional service to the Lord, automatically one will get detached from the material world. Automatically one gets the knowledge. So automatically the material desires reduce. Bhagavatam says that, that to one who is engaging in devotional service of the Lord, one gets this <clears throat> causeless knowledge and detachment from the world. Another meaning of the word Atma is nature. In this case, the word Atma Ram indicates that everyone is enjoying the particular nature he has acquired. But the ultimate nature, the eternal nature of the living entity is to serve the Supreme Lord. One who attains to the perfection of understanding his real nature as eternal servant of the Lord gives up his designative material or bodily conception of life. That is, a no that is real knowledge. Those who are in pursuit of knowledge and who get the opportunity to associate with a pure devotee to engage in the devotional service of the Lord. Sages like the four Kumaras as well as fools and birds can engage in the Lord's transcendental services. By being favored by Krishna's causeless mercy, anyone can be elevated to the platform of Krishna consciousness. Kripa mm. Siddha. Kripa Siddha, by the mercy of Krishna, by the mercy of the pure devotee, we can also become devotees. As it said that even birds and fools can engage in devotional service. So Atmaram nature, we all have a nature and each of us have a nature. But what is the constitutional position? What's the eternal nature? Jivara Swarupai Krishna Nitya Das. That is the eternal nature of the living entity. Right now we are thinking I'm this, I'm that, I'm born in this country, this family, this society, have this duty. But our real nature is to understand, I am an eternal servant of Krishna. So the more we engage in devotional service, the more we can be in touch with our real nature, the more we can realize our real nature. So we can see how association of the pure devotee is so important. One who becomes attracted by the transcendental qualities of Krishna begins devotional service. In Srimad Bhagavatam 10.15.8, Krishna glorifies the land of Vrindavan as, as he addresses Balaram in this way. Nadyo Adraya Kagamrika Sadaya Valoke Gopyo Antarena Bujayor Apiyats Fraha Shrihi. This land of rich Bhumi is made glorious by the touch of your feet. Being touched by your fingers, the creepers have also become glorious. When you look on the hills, rivers, and lower animals, they too are all made glorious, and the gopis being embraced by your transcendental arms are also made glorious. The gopis glorified Vrindavan in the following words. Dear friends, all these inhabitants of Rijbu, everyone including the birds, are glorified when they see Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram singing on their flutes as they go to the pasturing grounds with their friends. So this is the position of Krishna and Balaram. That they are glorious, so they make everyone glorious. They touch, they touch the earth, so the earth becomes glorious. They're touching the earth with the feet. The creepers, the trees, the hills, rivers, the plants, the, the birds, the bees, the peacocks, the cuckoos, the, everyone is becoming glorious. Why? Because they're associating with the most glorious Krishna and Banana. So we can become glorious too when we engage in devotional service to Krishna. And directly in touch with Krishna when you chant the holy name. 
the word atma atma also means this body the yogis who practice bodily exercises considering the body to be the self are also elevated to transcendental service of the lord if they associate with pure devotees there are many people who believe the body to be the self and they are engaged in many fruit of activities including bathing rituals and ordinary worldly activities but when they come in contact with the pure devotee they also engage in transcendental service of the lord we can see how the pure devotee is like a chintamani you know chintamani is a stone that whatever you touch it with the touch stone everything that it touches becomes gold here the pure devotee whoever he is coming in contact with he is making them pure devotees this is the the magic of a pure devotee you know then this is oh. the real magic someone was asking shla prabhupad can you show me some miracle shla prabhupad said this is miracle no these young american boys and girls are becoming vegetarian chanting giving up all sinful activities so oh. the magic of the pure devotee is making everyone into devotees in shrimad bhagavatam 1.8.12 it is status Oh, my dear Sutu Goswami, you, we have become darkened by the sacrificial smoke of fruit of activities, but you have given us the nectar of Krishna's love. It is also stated in Shrimad Bhagavatam 4.21.31. The waters of the Ganges flow from the tip of the lotus feet of Krishna, and by bathing in that water, everyone, including fruit, all sages, can wash dirty things from the mind. Mm -hmm. So here the sages of Nemi Sharanya, they are glorifying Sutta Goswami. Sutta Goswami, he had heard the Bhagavatam from Sukadev Goswami is a pure devotee. So he is also making the others into devotees of the Lord. And Ganges, Ganges is also purifying. Even those who believe that the body is the self. or those who are full of material desires are also in a sense atmaram when they associate with pure devotees of the lord they give up their desires and become perfect in the service of the the best example of this is found in hari bhakti sudho sudhodya 7.28 wherein dhruva maharaj said stana binashi tapasi stito aham My dear Lord, I came to worship you because I desired some land on this earth, but fortunately I have attained you, who are beyond even the perception of great sages and saintly persons. I came to search out some particles of colored glass, but instead I found a very valuable gem like you. I am satisfied, and I do not desire to ask anything of you. So Dhruva Maharaj is an acharya to show us that how, even if we are full of material desires, if we take up devotional service, gradually, gradually, all our material desires will be gone. Then we may get scared. They, we may say, "Oh my God, my material desires will be gone. What will I hold on to?" But we'll have the Supreme Lord. as through maharaj is saying i was looking for some fake broken pieces of glass but i found a gem you know so we may be scared to give up our material desires so we don't give up anything we just add krishna and everything will happen everything will happen just add krishna to our lives there is also another meaning to the word nirgranta the word also means foolish hunter or wretch pure man there is an instance of such a hunter who attained salvation and engaged himself in the devotional service of the lord simply by associating with pure devotee narad narad indeed lord chaitanya told sanatan goswami the following story of the hunter's meeting with narad so one moment let's see if this story is long we just have two minutes so shall we do it tomorrow yeah yeah okay. probably we start with it tomorrow then Yeah, yeah, might be better. Are there any questions or comments? No, all okay. So, uh, so we are reading that Hari Bhakti and uh, devotion, Hari Bhakti or uh, devotional service, it's beyond, beyond the Brahmanas, beyond the modes of nature, is it? 
what Dhruv Maharaj is saying, is it does it, does he mean it's beyond the beyond the modes of nature? I mean, yes. is it more than yes. a Brahma? Okay. Yes, it's beyond the pure devotional service. It's on a liberated platform. Yes, beyond the modes of nature. It's on the Brahman platform. Beyond it's the material the modes of nature. On the Brahman platform. Brahman platform means understanding I'm spirit soul. I'm not the body. And in that platform, one engages in pure devotional service. So how can we come to that platform? We engage in devotional service. We do not have to first think I have to come to that platform and then I engage in devotional service. No, by engaging in devotional service, everything will happen. Just by hearing and chanting about Krishna, everything's going to happen. Is that okay? Not that we have to try extraneously first to come to the Brahman platform and then we engage in hearing and chanting. No, hearing and chanting will bring us to the Brahman platform and then we continue to engage in pure devotional service. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. That's in fact the easiest way and the shortest way and the most surest way to reach the Brahman platform. So as we are hearing, because devotional service is uh, so pleasing that everyone, those who are even on Brahman platform, they get attracted to hearing and chanting about Krishna. So we are openly given, being given this opportunity. We are openly being said, hear and chant, hear and chant. So it's in our interest that we take it up and make our life sublime and give this hearing and chanting to others. Yeah. So, thank you. Hare Krishna, thank you so much.